This is JSA TV and JSA Podcast, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Dean Perrine, EVP at JSA, coming to you from ITW 2020, the virtual ITW. Joining me today is Mr. Stacy Farrar, uh, who is the uh, is responsible for business development, and Mr. Gavin McMillan. Uh, Gavin is responsible for global sales, both gentlemen coming from XKL. Gentlemen, welcome to JSA TV. Thank you, Thank you Dean. Stacy, let's start with you. Why don't you tell us what's new in the world of optical transport? Sure. Uh, I think what most folks uh, in the optical world have been talking about um, are these uh, 400 and 400 ZR, ZR plus uh, optical uh, optics. They're the small form factor lasers, uh, modules that are, are able to be fit into uh, where your QSFP plus or your SFP plus used to be fit in. Uh, however, you got four times, you know, 100 uh, bandwidth streams going going down the pipe. So, so these lasers um, are not only increasing the amount of bandwidth, but they're also making it possible for um, for organizations to build uh, networks a little more economically uh, in the metro area and be, and able to um, uh, to provide more bandwidth uh, to their end customers. Excellent, thank you, Stacy. Um, so let's just stick with you. Um, so how are these new like 4G modules changing the current models for for optical transport? Sure, Dean. Thanks. So, so basically, what 400G uh, modules are doing are separating out a metro and long haul networks. So, the 400G ZR and the ZR Plus are making it easier to to do um, uh, metro networks uh, in a, in a shorter time time frame. And what that means is um, you're able to plug these small form factor modules into your router switch, and all you need is a really good uh, multiplexer to aggregate these new lasers. Now, there are some gotchas. Um, these lasers are very uh, uh, OSNR sensitive and dispersion sensitive. And, when, and what that means is, is you would probably need um, dispersion compensation and um, amplifiers to make them work. However, um, for the long haul, uh, you still need uh, transponders that are, are able to go long distances and, uh, and have amplifiers in the middle. Thank you. You got it. You got it. Gavin, this one's for you. Um, pretty timely right now. How has the, uh, the, the current pandemic kind of shifted companies' uh, focus and forecast for, for building out networks? Uh, well, the organizations that we're talking to are, are all saying pretty much the same thing. Um, the employees are now working from home. That means the data has shifted from a, a core network location, such as the data center, to the residential or, or urban uh, location. Um, and that brings its own complications because the enterprise was typically fed by enterprise grade carriers before. Now the employees are being fed by uh, urban network providers, the cable TV companies, the ISPs, et cetera. So what we're finding is, is the, the middle mile has shifted um, just slightly. Um, we're still dealing with a lot of the interconnects who are doing the peering relationships between all the carriers. Um, but, but now we're starting to see that the data has moved. So it's less of an intense focus on a single location to a dispersed focus over a larger geographic location. Very interesting. So... Um you know, Stacey, I'm going to kick it back over to you. So, like, when, when cloud services have become, like, too cumbersome and too expensive, you know, what are the next steps in accommodating bandwidth needs? So, so in the telecom world and networking world, uh, you know, we say there's many ways to skin a cat. And, and really, it comes down to personal preference. So, there, there's multiple ways that you could handle that, that issue. Uh, one of those is, is buying a, a lease circuit from, uh, you know, your, your local ISP or, or, so, or somebody like that. But there's also... Um, the other route, which is um, what we favor, which is doing it yourself. Uh, and that's going to, uh, to your local ISP and, and getting uh, some dark fiber, uh, getting your own optical transport, uh, peer to their local internet exchange, and then managing that service. That solution is much more scalable and manageable in the long term, and it benefits the end customer uh, more greatly. Very good. Uh, Gavin, last question is for you. Uh, more, more pandemic stuff here, but specific to 5G build out. So how has or has the, the existing uh, COVID-19 pandemic um, impacted 5G build outs? And uh, what do you think the, the ultimately the, uh, the outcome of that will be? That's a very interesting question. And it, and it follows on nicely from what Stacy just said. Um, and, and actually, from what I'd said 
previously to do with where the data shifted to. So now we see ourselves with uh, our employees, our data consumers being in remote locations or, or further from the central office at least. Uh, so fi fixed 5G and, and mobile 5G is the ultimate solution providing that level of guaranteed bandwidth that they require from their home location. Um, we're also seeing a heavy push in a lot of countries, especially uh, you know, the developing nations across Europe, uh, the UK, North, uh, North America. We're seeing a, a faster push for the 5G rollouts. What's, what's slowing that down is providing enough bandwidth to the individual towers. As you probably know, 5G requires far more towers per um, distance of coverage than the previous 4G did, needed. Uh, so we're seeing a lot more interest in our... Uh, e-velocity products um, so we can light up more tower locations with one single box than could be done previously it's actually 2.4 times the amount of towers mm -hmm. uh, so, so the push for us has really been very exciting to see that rollout happen and providing that um, extended network solution to the to the actual data consumer very good. Uh, uh, Stacy, Gavin, thank you guys very much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. And thank you viewers for watching JSA TV and listening to JSA Podcast. We'll see you soon.